Number three, catch a fire. You can find this again on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. We're on all the social media platforms. So thanks a lot for viewing so far. Last week you would have seen Ras Akiem, as an artist. He spoke a lot about cultural identity in the Caribbean and Barbados, especially. This week we have a very special guest on the program. Her name is Felicia Leacock. Many of you know her as Brown Sugar. She has had to deal with her own adversity. We're gonna hear all about it. So just stay tuned. When we come back, you're gonna meet Felicia. For children, for children in the army, no. Your children, wake up and stop walking your sleep. Lift your hands up, it's no time to take defeat. If we now can in no open, we start to push it over. About so much, yeah. Every day it's the same old chorus, yeah. They say it with their mouth, but there's a conflict in their heart. No, something to add up, a revolution, why start? Just you can wake up and stop walking your sleep. Lift your head. Them say, yeah. say what they wanna say. Did they hear the people cry? I feel the pain we bear. You betrayed us and you say, say that you care. You won't convince us with your life. Okay, we're back. Um, we're speaking to Felicia Nico. Uh, everybody probably knows you through your business, Brown Sugar's Kitchen and Bar. Thanks for coming on the program. What have you been doing? I'm good. I'm still here, still alive, and still blessed. Still blessed. Okay, glad to hear that. Um, like I said in the introduction, um, your story is one that always amazes me um, in terms of the upkeep of your spirit uh, through adversity, uh, I would say. So talk to me about your issue. Tell people. I don't want to have to tell them. You tell them uh, what's been going on with you. Um, October 2012, I was diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. Um, I went through the process, went through therapy, and I'm at this point now. Okay. Um, from that stage until now, um, that's about two years that you're talking about. Um, so fill me in, tell me, uh, how did you come to grip, obviously, first of all, your diagnosis, um, and then... At first, um, let me go beyond that, because um, it was a beyond before that existed. Um, I... I had noticed a difference in my breast and as like anybody caught up in life and, and different situations, I ignored it and I, I, I chose to, to think it wasn't what it was, cause, but I did see the signs and um, coming on to a couple months past that because um, I had shown my gynecologist at one point and he had said to me, it was something called fibrocystic breast, not to worry about it. But then as months went by, um, I had some personal issues and stuff I was going through. And to me, the personal issues, like, um, it attacked that that was going on there. Kind of accelerated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the area then started to look way different. And, um... How I came to grow with it is that I went, I had went to town one day and it was coming up close to like, it was just around breast cancer month and stuff. And I, I had saw a pamphlet in a, in a store 
And I looked at the pamphlet and I, I was telling my friend, my breast look like this thing on this thing, yeah. you know? And she said, nah, I feel you stop, you know? I tell her, I'm so serious, my breast look like this pamphlet. So that made me then, you know, start to think in my head. So I came home and I called the Cancer Society and I made an appointment to get uh, a mammogram done. And <clears throat> when I went to the, had the mammogram done, the, um, the nurse was telling me, you know, you were under age and stuff. The age for mammogram is 40. Um, I said, but they still want to go ahead and do it. She said, okay, she will consult the doctors and stuff, and we will go from there. The doctor did, uh, did agree to let me do the mammogram the same day. I had the mammogram done, and the nurse that had examined me prior to the mammogram, she had said that she saw, she was feeling more than one lump in the breast. And <clears throat> I said, okay, I went ahead and had the mammogram done. And the funny thing about the mammogram is that it did not show the lump in my breast. Um, me now, I, I, didn't, I didn't accept that. I went to Imogen Ultrasound in Belleville and I had a breast ultrasound done. And after the breast ultrasound, um, the doctor, the doctor there, he asked me how long, how long that I had felt the, the lump in my breast. I said, well, it was a couple of months, but prior to that, um, I had felt something like a pee in the breast. And it's only lately that it started to give me that reaction of how it looked now. And he said, okay, he did the, he did the ultrasound. And he told me, okay, then uh, if I want to wait on the results or come back for them, I, I decided to wait it out. And I, the evening time then, I was called back in for the results. He sealed them and he gave them and told me to take them to the doctor um, because he believed it's, um, I, w I would need to have it removed to, um, to, to do a... Um, Further testing, right? Anyhow, um, I opened the letter before I took it to my doctor. I opened the letter and I read it. And whatever I was reading, I can't understand. So I Googled it. So after I Googled it, um, I started to get like a more open sense of what it was. And everything that was telling me, it was telling me um, in his way, he, he it, it wanted. Whatever he wanted done, it had to be done for histology. So I said, anything with histology got to be something real there. So <clears throat> I said, okay. So I took the um, the letter then the next day back to my gynecologist. And when he read it, he was like, I don't understand. I, I probably was more interested in below and instead of above. I was like, this not crazy, you know? And... He said, um, he don't know who he could have missed it. I said, but I had, I had shown you it before and you told me different, you know? And that was that. Then he referred me to this doctor at Shekinah Medical. One of the greatest doctors I could ever tell anybody I have met. I gave him all props, Dr. Trevor Shepard. Um, he didn't leave any stones unturned. He um, he went through everything with me piece by piece. He took to his easel and he drew everything in detail what the letter entailed. And he told me, well, this is what steps we need to take and we need to be aggressive now. Um, then at that point, he didn't actually told me I had breast cancer. He was just going through the steps of what this letter was telling him. After the after the, the after the um the point he, he he broke it down and he said all indications from this letter we were not gonna beat around the bush. All indications and all signs after I have examined you because he did examine me prior to the the letter and he said reading the letter and from the um examination all indications direct that you have breast cancer. At that point, I think that my life just flashed in front of me. Um, How did you really deal with it? 
at one he when he told me that I was in the office I'm with myself at that time and I told him give me two minutes because I had a girlfriend with me Rhonda Robinson and I went to the waiting room and I called her I said she come because I don't think I understand <laughs> what the shepherd just told me so I need him to put it to you you understand and when she came and then um, he explained to her he, he, he asked who was my next of kin and if I needed somebody else to support me and stuff and um, we broke it down and then he told her just what he told me and, I, and it was I don't know I, I, I take it in another world and but I didn't break down that was that was that was a point that I, I figured in my head you know you shouldn't just break down you know cause that's a sign of weakness and um, we spoke and he said okay my options were to go he, he goes surgery um, every week so my options were to go that week or if I wanted to wait and go another week so I told him well um, I needed some time to think it out and decide what I need to do and whatever and I did and I called him late in the week and I said okay I, I will go surgery so has, has this interaction changed your life, Alicia? It has impacted on my life in a great difference. It made, it made the better me came out. Okay, I don't, I don't want to really expand on that just yet. Uh, I think that's a pretty decent introduction. We're going to take our first music video and come back and find out exactly the change you're talking about. Kranix. See the performance. No people see me life and want one. But them no know say more time it look diamond. And them no see say I'm me belly me a crawl pan. Cause my mama just got me with tears in her eyes. She never know me have a stage show tonight. Not even she see the fears in my eyes. But me just a go and put on the show. Cause they don't know. Before the break, uh, we were talking about your attitude and dealing with this issue. Um, so talk to me about your support system and talk to me about your mental strength um, and combating the illness. Um, my support system came to my family, um, neighbors that became family. I have to shout out to Miss Jordan, my auntie Beat Lane, my this mother Mava. These are uh -huh. these are people that were close to me. My neighbor Miss Jordan, some mornings when I couldn't get up my bed, she come and she took my bed, took me in the bathroom, scrubbed me from head to toe, made sure it was fresh and powder me. <laughs> you know? And she took on my mother's role because it wasn't every day my mother could have been there for me. And she took on the role, she and my auntie villain, they took on the role as my mom. And um, they were there for me on many occasions. Some, some, sometimes after chemo, like some nights I would come home and I would feel like if that I was gutted out. Like my stomach would feel like if that somebody took a knife and just scraped me. And you know that that was one of the times. That's some of the times that like, it was so hard for me because that I I used to feel at my weakest point because that. <clears throat> That feeling was not a good feeling. And I always say that people, anybody that could pull through chemo, consider themselves as a warrior. And I consider myself as a warrior because that 
it wasn't easy it wasn't nothing easy people people used to tend to see me on the move because during my illness i never i never draw up or only time you would see me draw up in that sense is if that like i had the key morning it was too rough on my body that day and i couldn't take it i would, I would, no, I would lay down or whatever but i always had this thing in me i would take key more today and go work tomorrow because i always had this thing in my head that i ain't drawing up you know it would have to pull me that strong that i would not that i would lay down and that happened to me my first and my second chemo for my rest of chemo is right down i i get up i do it today get up and go work tomorrow where, where, where does that attitude come from when you talk it's a mental thing it's, it's a mental thing and anything that happened upstairs here you have to control it and if you can't control this like here you lost you understand and i always had this mentality in my head that i got to beat this this and beating me so i used to be there all the time i used to always be taking forward and i used to always say like <clears throat> you know today i gain up and i doing so and so i gain no time pay some bills i gain supermarket you know i always did things that kept me busy always positive yeah always uh, the only time I remember I got chemo to do is if, when, my, when I check my date so they know, okay, this is my week to go and do blood. And next week I got chemo. And if I know that, if I tell myself by my moving, because chemo is such a funny thing that it drops the blood count and it does a lot of stuff to the body. And you in order, you can't take the chemo if, you're, if, you're blood, if your blood count is down. And some days I always, sometimes because of my routine because i used to always go against what i was supposed to be doing so some days when they go my count would be down and when they go and forget my count now and it down they would give me these injections in my stomach and these injections now were injections every day for three days i had to do and that would raise my that's like force the bone marrow now to produce the cells that it need for the body to accept the chemo and that was one that is something that was rough because that in the in the chemo and the the bone marrow that's like forcing it so your body started to feel different my back used to feel like it crack open you know and my body used to feel like wait like if you like here i never had dengue but here people speak of dengue my joints will hurt and back feel like it tear open and you know that kind of that kind of feelings i used to go through i'm going to give you this opportunity now um to share a positive word with you. obviously no, nobody can know what it is that you would have been through uh, nobody can know the attitude that you would have adopted uh, to conquer so i want you to share a word with women in general men even okay um first off life does not stop at a diagnosis a diagnosis is just a diagnosis and it's up to the individual to take a positive note on it or take a step back and I believe that in taking that step forward it shows strength and it shows the will to live because um, there's a there's a passage in the Bible that says that, um, the will to live always it always conquers everything you, know, you understand and um, I, I would urge young girls out there to to look at life in a more positive note and don't think that life is all about just going out and partying and you know to check themselves and get checked it is it's not that expensive to be to get checked um a breast examination they can do it themselves they can lay down on your bed and use your hand and you know and feel the feel the breast feel you know in any differences in uh, anything in the breast you know um i would urge you to go forward and and don't lay back because I had laid back and uh, my point when I was diagnosed I was at stage two and um, I could have been worse like I, I could have been dead and buried because I chose to ignore that first and um, I would encourage you all to, to step up and do what's right and um, a check saves a life and it saved the mind because that I, I decided to go ahead and get checked. Okay, you still you still doing your walk this year? You're running as well? Yes, we are doing it March 30th. Um, we had to push back the date because originally it was supposed to be the 8th of March. We had to push up because of sponsorship. 
um, because in everything, you know, overheads are there and they can't do it alone. And um, sponsorship is one of the key things in it. So we had to push back in order to see how many more sponsors will come on board to help us cover the overheads and stuff. So March 30th. March 30th is our date and they are working towards it. I am also doing awareness in the schools. I'm going into the schools and um, uh, my alma mater is one. And um, <clears throat> I want to go into the school and just awareness. Uh, not only, not, I'm not only taking it to the road, I'm taking it in there because I believe that low pet talks can, it can do so much Make because um, some of the kids too might not, some of them might not know what, um, they might hear people say, oh, this, you have breast cancer, but a lot of kids, you know, you just have to fine tune it to let them know, well, this is what it really is. And this is what happened because some of them might see family members in the home going through this, but they don't know what is going on. So I believe that taking it to the schools and breaking it down is a good thing. So as I said, um, going through breast cancer changed my life a lot. And it made me look at life more positive. It made me know that I have more me to give, to give back than I, till I actually went through this. And that's why I believe it's a purpose that, I, that I've been through it. And I'm willing to share my purpose. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not ready to sit back and, you know, I, I'm willing to take my purpose beyond. And whatever steps are there for me to do, I'm, I'm willing and I'm ready to do it. Um, I must say thank you to some other people that were in my life that they were great to me. Kara ha um, Kara Hackett, Rosemary Downs, Marissa Phillip, Marissa Moore. <laughs> oh God. Um, my aunties. There are so many people that um, Melding Thorne. Oh, there are this so many. Look, there are so many. There are so many yeah, Virgo really Grant. There's so many. Yeah. Um, as I told you, people came in my life that <clears throat> people came in my life that were strangers, strangers, and strangers that meant more to me right now than people that were my life for life. So, and people that I've done so much for that they didn't even take the time to pick the phone at me how it was going. And you know, at one point that started to play on my mind emotionally, and I say, you know what? They could kick rocks though, because at the end of the day, people does always be about themselves. Because at one point, I I I say like, you know, one time buying for the going out party, you can go to the room for my van, and let me tell something. No, the ones that really stick by my side, you know, is some that. To show you how true the words he stepped in and played a father role in my daughter's life at a point when her father was not there 100% for me. You know, he stepped in and he played that role, you know, and that's things I can't forget. I can't forget to be thankful to people, people that came in and took the mother role when they, when, when they couldn't do for my daughter, when, when they could have just laid down. People that come and take my daughter in the park, carry she places. You know, and do they forget her? You understand? Um, there's things that, things like that, that hit home emotionally in my heart, and there's a lot I have to be thankful for. I have to thank the father because faith played, faith played a very, very important role in my life. Also, because without faith, without faith, um, I don't think I could make it. Because um, I used to get up and pray. And pray and pray and pray. I I used to go to church years ago. I stopped going to church. And um, people always tend to think that when you're sick, you're supposed to. That's the only time in your life that you can call upon God, right? And people believe that that's the only time people do. And at one point, I felt guilty doing it because I was like, it's only know that I sick that I really acknowledging the Father. You know, and when I think about, the, about where he brought me from and to the point that I am now, you know, I have I have to I have to offer him praise and thanks because that my faith kept me, and it showed me that faith can move mountains. Because when I pray, the praise always say, "Father, not my will, but thine." When you look at life and see like how 
whole thing happened and where it came from and where it at. Um, choices you gotta make, decisions you gotta go through, and it's it's up to you. Everything on your platter is is only you. And when you turn back and you see, you know, it's only but you can come from what's gone. And I called and I called on him. I could tell anybody that and my faith my faith and everything that I was doing because I never did anything with doubt because I believe anything that you're going to do and you're going to do in doubt is a waste of time but I always did my things anything that I did I always say well they put in my, my best foot forward and I believe this is what's going to happen and I and I said I believe that I'm going to get over this because it's a purpose and there's a reason why you're going through this and I got to say at the end of the day and it's manifesting and I can see that the good the good that was always in me i see i see it coming out um the way I lived towards other people uh, people that did me wrong and you know the way that i the way that i deal with them on a different level i live loving i forgive and you know because i ain't there you see that it, it, it's love you gotta deal with because if the, if that you do a hatred in your heart towards people, so you want to forgive an artist that forward, and that will that's always be key. And I think that that's it for me living in love with people, even though that they do me all kind of things. I mean, two people do me all kind of things, Lord have mercy for me to sit down and for me to sit down and <laughs> say things that I've been through with people. Okay, it I, I, a I, whole day. I got I got this young one, Niger. Behind the camera, man, fighting for some space. We're gonna break the rules and the ethics of our media, and we're gonna introduce Niger. How you doing, Niger? You alright? Yeah. Your mommy told me that you can sing, so I want you to sing for me. What what is it you can sing for me? You've been a good girl all evening. Let's hear it. Go ahead. We're gonna close out the program with Niger singing "Jesus Loves Me." Go ahead. Here I be, her. he is John. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. There, there you heard it. I want to thank you, Felicia, for coming on the program. Much thanks. Catch a fire episode number three. Don't forget, you can find us on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. All these social media platforms. We're going to take in a video. You heard it from Felicia. Just love a little. You heard? We'll be back. Now in comes the musical thing from the king's offspring, Jesse Rowe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Some people you right, and them still choose to show you hate. Chuck. Run them out of your yard, from them a play bad girl. Hey, them a bad biters, hypocritical to sideless. We call them modern day Judas. The spreaders of rumors Oh, them are bad biters Hypocritical to sideless We call them modern day Judas Spreaders of rumors Hey, hey, so why should I be afraid of you When you bleed just like I do The more you try fight, judge your light keeps shining through So I've got no time for you Cause in my view you wanna step in I'ma show you we should never leave a loop and feel so damn confused How every day you wake you ache Because you know you're fake And every step you take I bring you closer to your grave But I am like a column When I easily shake The certain say I feel me None of who can't take We guided by the monster Defender of the faith Yes Ordained to be great Hold them a bad biters Hypocritical to sideless We call them modern day Judas the spreaders of rumors Oh, them are bad biters Hypocritical to sideless We call them modern day Judas Spreaders of rumors But your teeth and tongue gonna let you down Reward for your words shall be profound Oh, screw all you want but go loo and drown Me slew you like a liar with a stone from a crown Not even the dog that be set on the wall of Babylon shall escape in this time So word to the wise, choose the right side And down to be in that by your foolish pride I said no weapon formed against I and I shall prosper, prosper 
So tell me some force right and more got out disrespect and face disaster. Tell them about fighters, hypocritical to side last. We call them modern day Judas. Spread us up rumor. Okay, thanks a lot for viewing. This has been episode number three. I want to say thank you to Felicia for coming on the program as well. Big respect. Don't forget Lamins on March 30th. You can find the breast cancer awareness walk. Think pink. You're going to get on board. You're going to support all those cancer patients and those who don't even have it. You need to get on board and get aware. Stay in tune. So this is Catch a Fan number three. Like I told you, catch us online, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. And even right here in the River Van Center, you can pass by. If you don't have a computer, you can also get this on DVD as well. So thanks a lot for viewing. I'm gonna say you dance for life. You're a lot of people. I'm gonna say you're the provider of the last year, the Almighty Eye. Joe! Rust the fire, live on the end of the heart of our flesh. Palonji, boom! Set the place of fire, rise his eye. Open the eyes, you better be wise. You're a lot of people.